Hey everyone, let's get right back into modeling the NES. I want to start by fixing up my lighting a little bit, so I'm going to add an HDRI to my scene. So select the World Properties tab and click this little yellow circle next to Color. Then choose Environment Texture. Now navigate to an HDRI. If you don't have any, you can get the ones that I use for free from polyhaven.com, link in the description if I remember. Switch over to the Render Properties tab, and under the Film dropdown, enable Transparent so that the HDRI doesn't show up in your viewport or renders. And I don't quite like this one, so I'm going to change it. That one looks better, I like that one. So now is a good time to start adding some basic materials. In the Material Properties tab, click the base color of this default material, and drop the value a bit so it's slightly darker gray. Add another Material tab here, choose the original material again, and duplicate it here. Lower the value even more. Add another material slot, choose one of the other materials, duplicate it again, and drop the value until it's completely black. Maybe back it off a little bit. Plastic isn't like Vanta black, so just kind of black. Select this bottom object and click this drop down and change the active material to the second material. Select this object, change the active material to the third material. And this looks pretty good. Select and tab into this object. I'm going to start splitting off some of these faces. Splitting disconnects the face from the surrounding geometry so the modifiers will apply to all the edges and give it some extra detail. So select this face and hit Y to split it off. Do the same here. These faces are still a part of the same object, but the faces are separate so they become solidified objects with a bevel which gives the overall look some depth. I'm going to add a few more edge loops and kind of eyeball them in based on pictures of the NES I'm looking at. Select and separate these two faces with Y. Separate this one, this one, and this one. It's definitely looking pretty good. Just for fun, I want to make it so that my lid can easily rotate open. Select the lid and tab into it, Alt select these two edges, hit Shift S and choose cursor to select it. Tab into object mode and then go into the object tab. Under set origin, choose origin to 3D cursor. Now if I rotate it on the X axis, it opens. I'm not actually going to make use of this, but it's, it makes setting it up to animate pretty easy. Have fun. I'm also going to add the little handle to the lid, which can be done in quite a few ways, but since I'm going to destructively change this object, I want to make an archive version of it. So Shift D to duplicate, rename the archive version, and put it in the archive collection. Disable the visibility of the archive collection. In front view, let's add edge loops to where the handle is. I don't think I need this edge loop, so Alt select it, hit X and choose Dissolve Edges. I could actually move through and dissolve a lot of unneeded edges if I wanted to, but I'm not gonna. Apply this Solidify modifier and delete this Bevel modifier. Select the face and extrude it out with E. We could use a bevel modifier to smooth out the edges, or we could try a subdivision surface modifier. A subdivision surface modifier smooths out all of the faces and edges of your object, so more edge loops are required to get the shape that we want. Essentially, every edge needs another edge loop. Turn up the viewport display level to 2. So now obviously this edge is way too rounded. To sharpen it back up a bit, let's add edge loops on each side of this edge. We've also lost a lot of our shape on this little bump out handle thing, so let's add edge loops on each side, and on the insides. And now this shape isn't quite right either. Now that looks pretty good. If you get real close, like, it's not quite perfect. Yet. 
adding another layer of edge loops on any long edge will make it look much better. Subdivision surface modifiers are very helpful for getting exactly the shape that you want while keeping everything smooth. The downside being that they add a lot of geometry. If I turn on wireframe in the object properties and disable optimal display, you can see exactly how much geometry we're adding. It's a ton. Most of it's unneeded to maintain the shape, but no need to fear, it's fixable with another modifier, the decimate modifier. It sounds scary, but switch it to planar and you can actually see that's quite helpful. If you get any unwanted creases like this, drop the angle limit. And it's perfect. Feel free to adjust the edge loop locations and the modifier settings to get the exact shape that you want. Select this bottom part of the NES. This is the main piece that has most of the small details. Currently it's hollow, which is probably how it would look if taken apart in real life, but since we're not going to be opening up our model, it might be more helpful if it were a solid object. So get rid of the solidify modifier and select all the bottom faces. Probably turn off the reference since it's in the way. Shift D to duplicate these faces. Grab and move them up on the Z axis. Switch the pivot point to active element and change to vertex select. Shift select a vertex on this upper edge of the object. Now hit SZ0 to scale by zero on the Z axis. Alt select and delete these two outer edges. Select all and merge by distance with M. Now fill in the faces. Some of my normals are flipped, as you can tell by the bevel behaving strangely. So select Alt and hit Alt N, choose Recalculate Outside. Select this edge and extrude up. Shift select this vertex and scale by zero on the Z axis, SZ0. Now fill in the final faces. There we go! Now we can turn back on the rest of the NES objects. Don't forget to frequently save your porjix. <laughs> so now let's add some of those details. There are a couple different methods that I use when adding simple details. Most of the time I end up just manually modeling things, but I also really like using Boolean modifiers. This indented area with the video and audio plugins is pretty simple, so I'm gonna shape it manually, but in a little bit I'll show you how to use Boolean modifiers. So just start outlining the detail and edge loops. The reference I'm using makes this seem a little smaller than the other pictures that I've got, so I'm gonna make mine a bit bigger. And we don't need this edge loop, so Alt select it and dissolve edges with X. Select and delete this face with X. Select these vertices, extrude out with E, and grab on the Z axis. Shift select this vertex and hit SZ0 to line it up. Make sure your pivot point is set to active element. Now fill in the faces. Now to avoid any potentially unwanted issues in the future, select all and recalculate normals outside. So that's one way to carve out additional shapes. Another way is the Boolean modifier. A Boolean modifier essentially uses another object to cut into or add to your current object. It's got a couple settings, and it makes much more sense once you're using it. So make sure you're selected on the bottom NES object and add a Boolean modifier. Then we need to create that object that will cut into our existing shape. In the 3D viewport, hit Shift A and add a cube. Name it Boolean or something to that effect. In edit mode, scale it down a bit and move it back here somewhere. I've actually almost got the exact right size already. Just scale and slide around on the axes individually until you get it looking how you want. Select all with A and shade smooth. Now select the original object and use this eyedropper to select the new boolean object. Switch from exact to fast. Select and hide the boolean object, and take a look at how you've done. And something's not right. 
It took me a second to realize what was up, but don't forget that modifier order matters. So currently we're beveling our object, and then cutting a cube out of it. We want to cut before the bevel. And it's also a tad high, so I'm going to drop it a bit to kind of line it up with this one. Hide again, and move that boolean modifier to the first position. That looks more like it. If your boolean modifier needs adjusting, re-enable its visibility and adjust its geometry accordingly. Select and adjust anything as you see fit. I'm just going to kind of move a couple things around. Now there's a few more details that I want to add with this boolean object. Like these channels running along the bottom of the NES. So select all and duplicate with Shift D and scale it down a bit. Now scale up on the X axis. Switch the pivot point back to medium point for now and position this new shape under the NES. Somewhere in here. Feel free to kind of toggle the boolean object's visibility off and on to see how it looks. Add edge loops in here. Select this face and extrude it back. Generally, you won't really see beneath a prop like this, so it's probably safe to skip this, but if you want, you can add the square cut out of the middle where the expansion port was. There are a bunch of vents or something along the bottom, so let's add some of those. Mark the middle of these faces with an edge loop. Then hit Ctrl Shift R to offset the selected edge with two more edge loops. We no longer need the middle loop, so Alt select it and dissolve edges with X. Add edge loops again, but this time scroll the mouse wheel until you're making six cuts. Add a vertical edge loop here. And now face select all of these faces and delete them with X. Essentially do the same thing over here and add these openings in. 8 vertical edge loops will give you the right amount of openings. Select and delete the faces. If you want to adjust sizing, Alt select the edge loops and the openings. Grab and scale on the Y axis to adjust size and positioning. Also delete these faces on the other side. It's kind of hard to tell from the reference images I'm looking at, but I think these edges look sharp so I'm going to leave them like this. Feel free to fill in faces, or bevel the edges, or do whatever you want to any of these edges. We've made a ton of edge loops for these openings, which we really don't need. In situations like these, you can choose to select and dissolve edge loops with X. And then triangulate your faces by selecting pairs of vertices and hitting J. I'm going to create a couple poles here, which is a single vertex with a lot of vertices connected to them. Which if you use wisely, you can create high poly looking models with minimal geometry. Make sure not to simplify your geometry like this too early on because it can make adjusting and adding edge loops a big pain. Big pain. And now I'm going to do the same with the rest of these edge loops. You also don't have to worry about triangulating or minimizing geometry by hand if you don't want to. You can just use a decimate modifier followed by a triangulate modifier to do the exact same thing. Thank you for watching! I hope you enjoyed! Please leave us a like or subscribe! Join us next time when we finish up the NES. If you want to check out the model, it's up on our Patreon. Thank you again! Stay safe! I love you all! Goodbye!